Hi, everyone, and welcome to another very special Talking Insomnia episode. We have Coach Pauline with us. Welcome. Well, thank you. I'm glad to be here. Really, really glad to be here. And for those of you who don't know Pauline, uh, we're going to talk today about uh, her, your Pauline, your uh, insomnia journey, as well as how you decided to become a coach and a little bit of that as well. But without further ado, actually, let us know how, you know, it all started on your end. Well, I've always, I've always been in the helping professions. I was a, uh, a psychotherapist for many years. Um, and in 2008, I was diagnosed with breast cancer. It was a very uh, frightening uh, experience for me. And um, the day that um, the doctor gave me the diagnosis, he also handed me a prescription for sleeping pills and said, here, you'll need these. So he told me I wasn't going to be able to sleep. Um, and so I started taking them. And um, I, I also experienced a fair bit of anxiety. So um, I don't know which came first, the sleeping pills or the anxiety, but they, they certainly coincided. And um, um, while I was going through treatment, I didn't have a whole lot of trouble sleeping because I was so tired, you know, from the chemotherapy. Um, and after I finished treatment, that's when I really became aware of difficulty sleeping and anxiety around sleep. And that's when I started doom scrolling and not reading. Well, yeah, I was reading about um, uh, uh, lack of sleep and insomnia and its impact on disease. And I was reading that if I didn't get eight hours sleep every night, I might get a recurrence or I might get a, a, a new cancer, you know, or a heart attack or diabetes or any number of, of things. And um, so I became really uh, very worried uh, about my sleep. And the more worried I became and the harder I tried to sleep, the less sleep that I got. And that went on for a long time um, un, until a few months ago, as a matter of fact. And um, I, um, uh, I tried uh, different things with the sleeping pills because of course, uh, it didn't take long before they no longer really made me sleep all the time. And then they made me sleep less and less. They seemed to actually interfere with the quality of my sleep and I would sort of have a hangover the next day. And so I would skip a few days thinking, well, maybe that'll make them work if I'm off of them for a couple of days, even though I would go into withdrawal and I would uh, have insomnia for a couple of nights. I'd think, oh, well, I'll, I'll catch up when I take a sleeping pill. Uh, and sometimes it worked and sometimes it didn't. And it was really quite, it was really quite confusing. Um, and, um, so, you know, I tried melatonin and uh, different teas and, you know, acupuncture and Chinese medicine and all kinds of things. And n nothing worked in a solid way. Sometimes something would work for a brief amount of time, maybe a few nights, and that would be all. And then I'd try the sleeping pills again, and I might get one night's sleep, and then, or I might not. So I was in this uh, battle you know, a real struggle. I wasn't aware at the time of anxiety, but I was pretty obsessed with, um, with sleep. I would wake up in the morning feeling totally dragged out, and I would think all day about going to bed at night. And I tried going to bed early, and that didn't make any difference. I tried going to bed late, and that didn't make any difference. So, um, it was um, it was a real struggle. It uh, it really was, and um, a couple of years ago, I found a CBTI program, cognitive behavioral therapy for insomnia, online, produced by some sleep physicians at Harvard. And I paid for that, and I, I and I went through it, and to a certain extent, it was helpful in terms of some of the education. And briefly, it seemed to uh, improve my ability uh, to let go at night and, and sleep, but it didn't, it didn't last, you know, it wasn't, 
I mean, maybe less than a month. And then I was back on the same treadmill um, and um, going back and forth, you know, with the, with the sleeping pills again. Um, and then one day, because um, I live in Canada, and I, I was reading the CBC website, and I came across uh, a story by Sonia, uh, who had taken the, the bedtime program, uh, talking about how uh, marvelous it was and the uh, amazing um, uh, effect that it had. And I had been jumping around, you know, different um, uh, different uh, apps, you know, trying to find something that would make a difference. And nothing, nothing did. Some things actually made it worse. Um, but I was, uh, I was desperate, and I immediately signed up for bedtime. And, and it had a profound positive effect that has been lasting. I think I was really ready for it when I, when I found it. But I'll tell you the first really big difference. Was- Actually, sorry to interrupt, Pauline. This is kind of like we really want to hear this, of course. But before we do uh, get, talk about this part, let's spend just a little bit more on kind of like, uh, you know, what led up to it and what insomnia was like. I always like to ask this question, like there were many years of the struggle, you know, experimenting with medications, trying CBTI, et cetera, et cetera, you know, but you still worked at this time. You still functioned. Like what were your days like, generally speaking? Well, um, uh, five or six years ago, I, uh, I, I retired and I wasn't really happy with being retired. Um, and so my days weren't very functional because I told myself Um, you know, I would be up so much during the night. I might get two to four hours sleep during the night. And, and then I would feel really beat and dragged out. And then I'd say, well, I really can't do anything because I'm too tired. And, um, and then I would feel like I not only wasted by night, but now my day is wasted as well. And that's what it was like. And so, um, maybe once a week or so i would i would wake up feeling rested and i would i would do a whole lot and i would think oh well okay this is this is broken through but then that night i would not sleep very well or not at all and then i'd say well maybe i did too much um and so sorting out what to do and what not to do was part of the uh the burden of, of dealing with it. And, and I think burden is the word that I would use most often to describe what it was like to have insomnia. Wow. Yeah. Well said. So we have a, you know, a picture of like once a week or something like that, maybe you slept well and got some relief, but generally slept very little during the day, felt tired, slept very little during the night, felt very tired during the day. It was, it was, it was really, um, you know, consuming a lot of your, uh, you know, mental bandwidth. It really was. Yeah, it really was. And I didn't sleep during the day. Every once in a while, I might have a 20 minute nap in the afternoon. I've never really been a, a napper. And, um, uh, but yeah, but just generally felt like time was being wasted. Um, it was really, uh, it was, it was quite difficult. I hear. All right. So yeah, with that in mind, now we have a kind of a picture of like what it, what it was like. You found Sanya. And by the way, for anybody who's not so familiar with our community, Sanya was uh, uh, one of our graduates and she went on to tell her story in CBC, which is like, like the BBC of Canada, a really big news outlet. And then by serendipitously, you found that, found your way to bedtime, downloaded it. And yes, tell us like, what was the eye opening moment? What, what happened next there? Well, the thing that was a real eye opener to start with was the whole notion that because I didn't sleep didn't mean I had to stop my daytime life and that it was okay to uh, to keep going. That and the whole notion of befriending wakefulness because I would be berating myself all night long and I'd be doing the sleep math, you know? Well, if I go to sleep now, I'll get six hours look at my watch. Well, if I go to sleep now, I'll get five hours then. Oh, I didn't go to sleep then. So it's going to be another two or three hours before I, uh, I get to sleep. So, um, uh, yeah. So 
um, I, I, that, that went into my head very quickly. And I was able to let go of doing that. Um, and that was like lifting the burden right there of allowing myself to be awake at night and not trying to orchestrate circumstances that would allow me to sleep that didn't allow me to sleep. Uh, trusting my brain to do the work. Wow. And, uh, um, and, and I know for a lot of people, it's very difficult to get to that point. Um, for me, it was, it was very quick. And that doesn't mean I didn't have bumps along the way that I didn't have, you know, there have been times in the last few months where there have been things going on in my life that upset my sleep. Um, you know, we had some painting done, we had some floors sad, you know, and furniture pile up everywhere. And so there was, there was bedlam and chaos. And, um, uh, and in, instead of fighting myself with myself about sleep, um, I simply told myself, of course, anybody's sleep would be disrupted in the middle of all this. Um, and so, yeah, it, it's just made it so much easier. It's freeing. The burden is, is lifted. And then when I got um, started feeling, you know, so much better uh, so quickly and started reading your stuff, and, and I found that there was... Uh, a consistency, an intellectual consistency that all, all fit together, you know, like it was really well done, you know, uh, and I was bored being retired and I wanted to get back into, you know, helping people. And um, so I went looking online uh, for training programs for sleep coaches. And mostly what I found was something that was like, an, you know, three hours or three weeks or something like that. And then I discovered that, that you were training people over months and mentoring and working with us. And that made a whole lot of sense to me to do that. And, and the programs that you have and the way that you teach fit for me. And so it became easy. Amazing. And we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit more. Uh, uh, your transition to becoming a sleep coach is a, uh, and a very nice story there as well, but I just uh, maybe staying a little longer on kind of this, like the clarity that came like, and I, I think you said it very nicely, which was like, you said you, you were ready for it. You were at a, a place where it was almost kind of like there was just one piece of the puzzle or a couple of pieces of the puzzle that needed to kind of like fit there. And then everything was very clear, which maybe has, maybe is thanks to um, all the work you've done as a counselor yourself. Do you think that played a role? Um, I, I think partially, um, having been a therapist for so many years, uh, allowed me, uh, and, and I trained as a Gestalt therapist, you know, where there's this belief that what's good for the goose is good for the gander. And, and so if you're going to be working with people, you need to work on yourself. Um, so there was, so that there was that part. And also, um, I've practiced Zen meditation for about 30 years. And that sort of prepares one for uh, patience and openness um, to what's happening, you know, being present. Um, and, um, and so, you know, the whole, the whole notion of self-acceptance and, and being patient in, you know, the, and, and non-attachment to the outcome. It was, I just needed that little nudge from you, you know? Exactly. And, and then it took me to where I sort of was anyway, but needed to get nudged to be right into it, you know? So that helped. But not everybody has been meditating for 30 years. So that, That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Which, again, as you, you point out, like, I think every everyone, I, I'll put it this way, no one needs to struggle with insomnia or sleep. But how, how that transition happens, you know, it's different from person to person. It can take a little longer, a little shorter for some people, et cetera. But, mm -hmm. um, but now I guess before we start talking more about like you transitioning to become a sleep coach, um, you know, for many years, your day had been very much consumed by like thinking about sleep, problem solving, sleep, et cetera. But then you had this freedom and the, the burden was lifted. And it, it, what, uh, 
can you, can you, you know, how did your, your day to day change? Oh, um, I, uh, I do more in a day and I have a real profound sense of satisfaction as I complete things. That's amazing. Um, yeah, I, I'm less, um, less procrastination. Um, I don't assume that I can't do what I want to do uh, because I'm too tired. Uh, there are days when I'm tired um, and because I still have days when I, uh, you know, don't sleep terribly well, like the night before last, I didn't have very good sleep. Last night I had a pretty good sleep. So, but I've also, you know, I've let go of the definition of what a, what a good sleep is. And instead I, I trust my body and how I feel when I get up and I, but I do more than simply trust my body when I get up. Because there are days when I wake up and I feel quite tired. And then I, I just, you know, I have my breakfast and a cup of coffee. And when I wake up and I feel really tired, I ask myself, I just engender a bit of curiosity and say, I wonder what I'll feel like in a couple of hours. And almost every time, you know, a couple of hours later, I feel quite different than I do when I first wake up. And I, I, I think it's easy to make the mistake of assuming that the way we feel when we first wake up is how we're going to feel for the rest of the day. Um, you know, in, in uh, working with, with insomnia, we talk about hyper arousal, how it keeps you awake. But there's also the normal arousal during the day that allows you to stay awake and to do the things, you know, that you want to do. And so when you first wake up, you're not, you may not be fully aroused. And the process of getting dressed and eating something and, and looking out the window and, and certainly taking in some natural light makes a big difference. Um, and so, yeah, I've uh, realized that that's really important is not to make a decision about my day based on what I experience when I first wake up. Take it minute by minute, hour by hour. And, and do what I can. Makes so much sense. And so glad to hear this. And um, yeah, you know, uh, it was it was interesting because you were you were actually my client in bed, Simon, and we were working. Yeah. And then uh, just about when we were about to start our, um, you know, November. Yeah, it was November, right? November batch of Ooh. like coaching students. You were like, hey, I think I want to join. And I was like, that, that would be wonderful, but we're almost there, you know, are you sure? And you were like, yes, I'm, yeah, I've right. been retired for a while. <laughs> yeah, you were saying like, I've been retired. I want to get out of retirement. I think I yep. really want to do this. And we had a chat and then just like that, you joined and, and tell us like what, uh, you know, what was, what was that experience like? It was exciting. Uh, it, it really was. It was wonderful to, um, you know, to learn new things and be part of a community of learners. Um, because it wasn't just a community of learners with you and I and Michelle and, and Amity, the other student, but it was the community of learners on the Slack channel who were overcoming uh, their, um, uh, their insomnia. And, and I just learned so much from them and from, and from you so, um, and from Michelle. So I'm, and I'm constantly, I'm constantly learning. So, and sometimes I wonder if I really know enough to be doing this. <laughs> but the, uh, that, that, you know, sometimes, you know how it is, like sometimes we feel like in the moment we feel like, oh, I've, I've mastered it. I, I know everything. And then the other moment we're like, I don't know anything. I know nothing. I know nothing. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you've had a, like your, uh, you know, this is a little short side, side, side loop, but I'm personally curious about this. You've had many careers and many uh, jobs during uh, right polling. You've been a journalist, a therapist, and uh, is, have you done other things as well? Well, I was a journalist many, many years ago um, before I went back to university to study uh, uh, psychology. Um, and um, yeah, I also studied Chinese medicine. Um, and uh, so I, I'm trained as a traditional Chinese medicine practitioner, but I don't, I don't practice that. I didn't um, uh, renew my, my, li my license to do that, um, except on my husband. So, 
Um, so, uh, yeah, and I'm a musician as well. I, I'm principal harpist with um, uh, Orchestra Kingston here in, in uh, Kingston, Ontario. And uh, so, um, yeah, so I work hard at, uh, at my music. I think that's the hardest thing I've ever done. Yeah. Yeah. You know, when, and, it, and it's funny, it's the thing about, about music. I, I uh, uh, when I was going through cancer treatment, I was staying with a friend who, who played the harp and, and uh, I would listen to her practice every day and I was like, oh, that's so lovely. You know, and I thought, how hard can that be? <sighs> it's hard. <laughs> it's really hard. Hours and hours and hours of practice. I can imagine. Uh, so you learned uh, as an adult to play the harp. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I just imagine that that takes even more, like, uh, you, you know, when we are learn as kids, we we kind of like, I, I think in some way, can be maybe e easier to learn than as an adult. So that's, uh, you know, speaks it a lot is. of how willing you to learn you are. Yeah, because kids' brains are sponges, you know, right. we absorb and our brains are sort of full and we're losing some of the sponginess too. And, uh, and the other thing too, is that um, learning to play an instrument is like learning, a, it is learning a second language, learning right. music. And um, and then with the harp, you've got the the right hand and the left hand, you know. So um, so it's uh, you're sort of learning the bass and the uh, you know and, and the melody, and so it's like two languages. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, it's funny that there was the harp was there like on cue actually as we were speaking of it. <laughs> <laughs> actually, it was a phone call coming in. I did I just turned it off. So. Uh, Sorry about right. that. No, not at all. Um, now, um, uh, I, I guess if finally here I have my my the two questions I always like to ask people that are guests here, uh, which is one of them is if you could um, you know travel back in time and, and tell yourself something when you were in the in the thick of the struggle with with insomnia. What uh, what would you tell yourself? Well, you mean if I knew then what I knew now? Yeah. Now, oh, I, I think I would tell myself stop worrying and about it and let it happen yeah let go stop fighting it um, very, very nice. yeah, yeah and also you know to um stop fighting with the uh with the sleep meds uh, it was something i learned from you that was really important because i was struggling you know with going on them and off them and on them and off them and i and i asked you what you know? What should I do? And 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 you said the real problem with sleep meds is is the conflict. Either take them or don't take them, and uh, but but don't fight with them because that sets you up uh, for more more insomnia and more anxiety. And so at the time I was preparing for a concert, and uh, I wanted to get off of them, and I knew that there would be some withdrawal, which would involve. Uh, sleeplessness and so what I did was I, I cut them in half and I continued taking them until um, until I till the concert and did a wonderful performance and then um, and then I just then I stopped and and it was no worse than going off of coffee you know it was um, in terms of the amount of suffering I had a couple of nights where I didn't sleep terribly well, and, and and that was fine. But during that period of time, I'd learned enough from you uh, to make it a whole lot easier to get. Now, interestingly enough, last summer, I tried to go off of them, and I was a bear. I was just, uh, I, I wasn't sleeping, and uh, I was getting maybe a couple of hours sleep a night, and that went on for uh, a month, and I had no patience, and I was cranky, and I was horrible. Um, and but but this time, because I I knew what I knew, I uh, I just carried on, and I was I was fine. Amazing. So it's it's the struggle and the anxiety that makes really all of the difference. And um, uh, you know, when we talk about sleep sleep confidence, I think a, much of sleep confidence is about. Uh, trusting yourself, trusting your brain that it will know what to do because its job is to help us survive and we do need sleep to survive. You know, we don't need a whole lot, but we don't know that. 
<laughs> until we find right. it out. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think that's, 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 that's amazing. You point out that the same, like the exact same behavior, which is like stopping to take uh, a medication or weaning off a medication is, is, can be completely different when we're like educated and understand versus when we're kind of like, we, we don't really, we, it's, it's a mystery and we don't really know what's happening. It's yeah. the power of education really. It, it really is be, because it's all based on your assumptions and your beliefs. If your beliefs are that you can't sleep without it and then you stop, you're not going to sleep. Uh, but if you, if you know that your, your body will sleep as it needs to, and, and uh, there's, you know, for a lot of people, I mean, if it's a simple uh, sleep aid, the withdrawal is not long. Well said. And I think you finally here, um, you are uh, actually, you are starting your own coaching practice. You have a website up we will link to in the description here. I'm super excited about that. Uh, but yeah, well, what are your thoughts, ideas? How, how are you planning to, to help people? Well, I'm, I'm going to do it in much the same way you, you do, I guess. I'm going to have a, a Slack channel with membership, monthly membership, with a couple of Zoom calls a week. And um, uh, and, and I think for the first month, I'm going to offer it uh, for free, anybody who wants to sign up. Um, and that will allow me to sort of do a beta test of my, of my program and, and teaching. Um, and, um, so, uh, I'm, I welcome, you know, feedback people would like to, uh, uh, email me or go through my, um, uh, through my website to contact me. I would love to hear from them. Um, and I'll also be offering, uh, individual coaching, uh, by the hour or, um, you know, uh, uh four, four sessions with a, uh, at a time with a, a discount. Amazing. That's, that's wonderful. I'm so glad to hear this. And uh, it's, it's this arc to me. It's like this interesting arc. Like we had Sonia graduate. She decided to tell her story on CBC. You heard the story. You found us. You did better. You become a coach. And now like it's almost like the, the this nice, I don't know, wonderful, wonderful uh, uh, story continues because now you're going to help people, et cetera, et cetera. So it's uh, yeah. just an amazing thing. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, uh, yeah, I would just say thanks so much, Pauline, for, for being here and sharing your story. I look forward to continuing being touched and working with you. And uh, we'll go from there. Yeah. www.welcometosleep.ca. Welcometosleep.ca. And again, we'll link to it in the description. So. Right. And thank you, Daniel. Oh, yeah. Pauline, anytime. Thank you so much. And yeah, we'll keep talking. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye, everyone.